To really understand this tier list, you have to look at Katarina the way I'm looking at her. What is Katarina? She's shit in lane, she wants to go to these skirmishes, and she doesn't have control of the wave usually. So the best matchups are going to be matchups that are weak in lane, they allow you to shove for whatever reason, and they're matchups that aren't great in skirmishes. So you look at this, Aurelian Soul, weak in lane, you can shove in whenever, and he's dog shit in skirmishes. And then you look at the bottom, Renekton, he's gonna shit on you in lane, he's gonna hurt your health bar, he, you can't shove, and he's gonna beat you in skirmishes. Aurelian Soul does everything you want to be able to do, and Renekton prevents all of that. So that's kind of the approach I'm taking this from, and that's why all the melee characters are like C or below, because it's hard to shove, maybe they're good in fights, whatever. We're just gonna go into the S tier matchups. Great matchups, um, high cooldowns, can't really do much about you roaming. And we'll see why I put them there. So the first champions are ones that are weak in lane, they have high cooldowns. You can pretty much do whatever you want. You can try to win your lane, you can just roam, pretty much do whatever. So Aurelian Soul, very weak early game. And yeah, he doesn't have a lot of pokes, so you can just kind of just like farm. I don't know what Soul's doing here, but like, I'm just gonna skip around. It's just gonna be like, a lot of farming. He pushes you in, whatever. Katarina could look for a trade here. It's like Soul is just so weak, right? Yeah, good. Great little quick trade. And now, Cat can like, shove this wave in, recall, or like, I guess Soul push. Do whatever she wants. Pushes in the wave, starts running down here, bot. Bunch of shit happening. All right, skip forward a little bit. Pick up some kills. Woohoo, great. We'll look at the next one. Vigar, right? Kind of the same thing. Vigar, very weak early. You can look for some trades if you want. You can just farm if you want. You can just roam if you want. Champions in this tier are just really weak early. Like, get her to go for a great little quick trade here. Jump, oh, even Shumple's on him. And it's like almost literally the same thing. Now Katarina can like shove and roam. Oh. Or she can just roam here. I'm thinking she just shoves this and then maybe moves bot. Uh, long fight bot. Maybe shove reset or something. Vigar's kind of out of mana. After this wave, I think we just shove and reset. Oh, wards. Maybe he's just trying to keep the Vigar in lane just cause he's low mana. Shoves it in, sees the play happening top. Runs up top. Cool, gets a kill, two kills. Right. Kinda the same thing. I feel like Lux is probably the hardest one in this tier. Lux has a bit more poke than the other two, but still, she has like long cooldowns. This guy went on door on shield because yeah, Lux does have more poke. Lux going to a fight in the enemy jungle. No. Alright. The gank. Fight pretty chunked. Now Cat can just shove this in. Maybe roam somewhere. Yep. And like, what is Lux gonna do? Like, Lux, Vigar, Aurelian Soul, what are they gonna do? They're not gonna follow you when you just shove it in and just like run around, right? And they can't really do too much, like... She, th she used her Q, what, she has E now. Like, what is she gonna do? She can throw an E, who cares? Even if Kat gets hit by that, that doesn't mean anything. Easy roam. We'll look at one more. Okay. Malahar just has like E. He went tier. He has TP. Wave is pushing on to your side. If Malahar walks up too far, you can take a great trade onto him. Especially with his Conqueror Longsword, like... He walks up too far, he's under some serious kill threat. Like, here. Do we kill him? Yep. Great. Alright, so the second tier, it's kind of more of the same, except it's just kind of more annoying, pretty much. So Twist of Fate, his passive is kind of annoying, right? You don't want him to auto you. Actually deals a little bit more damage than you might think. 
And Twisted Fate has like, he has like a bit more damage just because he goes like attack speed shard. His passive gives him attack speed, like his autos are pretty good, so kind of annoying. But still, kind of more of the same thing here. Like, TF has to be careful. He's pretty deep in the lane, could get ganked, but it's a little bit harder for Katarin to look for a trade, especially since this one has Dark Harvest. But yeah, it's a little bit more farming. It's in a six Twisted Fates. Realms are pretty good and they're hard to follow. Just not really seeing an opportunity to get a good trade on this guy. Yeah, and he pushes a little bit quicker. Because he has lower cooldowns. Looks like Twist of Fate decided to recall or something. We recall ourselves. Twist of Fate hits 6. Ult's bot. Pantheon dies. TF doesn't get anything, but probably helped. And yes, yeah, so then there's this like team fight, right? This skirmish right here. You're way stronger than TF in these kind of fights. But, like, this is what you're looking for. So, Annie is pretty... I guess she has decent traits. She can like auto Q auto and stun you and might be hard to trade back if she's good at avoiding daggers. She has good gank setup as well. Annie Talia looks like it could be annoying. It's harder to trade into Annie. See, we go for a trade here. She got the stun. There's minions hitting you. Still a pretty good trade though. Ooh, take a terror shot. Eh, not so good now, but you can see how it's bit more difficult to get good trades into Annie compared to like by our soul or these mages with high ass cooldowns. Can we just looking to crash the wave? I don't think we die here. Not being able to crash is kinda annoying. Oh actually goes for a kill. Oh shit. Nice. Yep, bit more tricky. Range unfavorable. These people have like a lot of poke or harass. Bit more of a lane bully. A lot of champs in this tier, they can take different setups and their setups are very important. So this Victor has TP and first strike. He's going to have much less kill threat on you and much less poke because he doesn't have like airy or electrocute or something and he doesn't have ignite. If this guy had a more aggressive setup, maybe I would consider throwing shield. Um, against a lot of these mages, maybe you can just take second wind instead if you like struggle against them. Because that they do have a lot of poke. Um, very important thing against a lot of these is like, you see how Victor, he has his Q, right? You want to take the first part of Q, but you don't want to eat the second part of Q. And you kind of need to know the range. So this cat does a good job of staying at like the range of Q where he can get the first one off, but not the second. Those little interactions are in a lot of these range matchups, but really important in these ones. Like Cassio, if you get hit by her Q, you cannot let her E you. Like preferably just not get hit by Q at all. Syndra, uh, maybe I should move her up. She's a bit weaker in lane than these picks. She gets stacks of splinters and those things give her mana if she hits two abilities. So you don't want to get hit by two different abilities. Yeah, Victor, as I said, the Q thing and trying to dodge his laser is kind of tricky. Like you need to move. Yeah, you see how we get hit right there? You want to move like if, if Victor's walking at you straight like this, you want to move like up and down rather than like right and left. That makes sense. Nico. You know, she has a passive, the third hit, Oriana. Her ball actually deals less damage to you if it's through a minion, so you wanna have it hit a minion before it hits you. And Ari, she has her Q. It comes out, comes back. You wanna not get hit by the coming back, preferably. I mean, with a Dark Seal and Victor's this setup, like, kinda just farm. I mean, there's not too much going on. I guess you can try to take quick trades on him, but kind of needs to like use his Q or maybe miss a laser. I'm just kidding. Yeah, so he used his laser there and you can see he used the second part of his Q. His Q is coming back up. Yeah, his Q came back up right there and he only got the first part of Q. So that was a pretty good trade. 
His E was down and his Q was down for most of it. And if Victor W, you would not have gotten stunned because Katarin just W's right away. So yeah, you can see how these matchups have like a lot more to them. I guess you can get specific like this in the other ones, but yeah, it's a bit harder. Good gank. This one is from the Victor side. You can see this Victor has airy ghost and our Katarina opted longsword, three pots. So Katarina wants to kill him, but this Victor is just gonna poke away and this poke is gonna stick. Katarina's gonna have to run through her pots super quickly and she probably didn't take second wind. So I've got a word and this is a Victor pod perspective so the cat gets shit on. I wanna see Kat's health bar after just one E with like an airy. Does he have Scorch too? Oh man, he has Scorch too. Yeah, you see airy. I almost always just go Dawn Shield. The poke just adds up so easily. Yeah. Victor playing around the daggers very well. Yeah. And I mean, this game is just done for this Katarina. Can't die that early and even start longsword. You ran through three pots. Like, like Katarina's by boots and a pot. What you gonna do? I definitely think you can go longsword. Uh, it makes more sense with Conqueror, I think. Like, if Katarina has Conqueror here, does she just kill him? She has an EE coming up. Damn. Eh, maybe she wins that with Conqueror. Not sure. Most of the time, what you want to do as Katarina is get as much farm as you can, keep your health high in case fights happen, you don't want the wave like stuck on the enemy side, and champions that like prevent those things are more difficult. Cassio, you can't really have control of the wave. If she lands the Q, she can run you down with ease super easily. So the landing phase is like pretty tough. You gotta just try your best to farm well and keep your health high. This is probably one of the more trickier matchups in this tier. Once you get component soap, you can just shove the wave and she can't really do too much to stop you. You can't really do much about her just sitting there and farming, right? Top ganks mid, we get a fight. I'm um, just going to the next one. I want to find one where nothing really happens and Keteran just starts shoving waves and running around. Cassio, poking, making it hard to farm. Doing her best to farm. Keep our health high. Looking to shove this wave. Our wave is slow pushing into her. It's gonna be kind of awkward. And we don't want the wave stuck on her side. But like, we're definitely taking that dagger. Pretty good trade. Like, shove the wave. Gets it in, super great. Get a reset. Cassio's roaming over there, so just shove the wave. Maybe we look to make a play bot side since shit's down happening top. Go for a plate, no. Yep, look, bot side. All right, nice, nice, nice. Shove this wave, reset. Now we're gonna have, don't get a wand, but we still shove waves and just like, run around. This cast feels being really weird, like she's roaming a lot. And I feel like she, she, she should just like sit in lane and like try to prevent you from like doing this, right? Random one, I feel like we'll go with Ari. So it's gonna be kind of similar. Gonna be tricky to farm. We just want to keep our health high, get good CS, and go to fights if we can. Actually, Cat Evolve went longsword with Conqueror here, so He's looking for the wave to be on his side and try to like just all in her. This was before the durability update. So it's a little bit easier to get these kind of kills before, but I think it's still possible. Really chunk for now though. Got a lot of pots. Oh damn. Why this is tough, but a lot of potions. I still think we can go for the kill here. Talon is nearby. 
I mean, you just have so much kill pressure with Longsword Conquer into Ari. Yep, nice. Starting Longsword and going Conquer, still a thing you can do. I'm just not really focusing on that as much with this guide. I'm just looking at mostly just pure AP, normal Katarina style. Because when you think of Cat, you don't think of level 2, level 3, solo killer. At least not anymore. Usually. Also, look at the wave here. Look at the health bars. Look at the items. Like, if you don't kill the Ari here, you are so screwed. Like, you have to take a terrible recall. You're gonna miss a lot of farm. Gee, Ari's gonna get 6 before you. It's gonna look just like that Victor replay we watched. And you have a long sword, so like, you're delaying your items. Unless you go Thunderer. It's just like high risk, high reward. So I wouldn't really do it unless I'm super confident in the matchup or I feel like I have to. Kind of same thing, Ari harassing level one, hooking you down, making it hard for you to farm. You just wanna <laughs> get him as far as you can, man. Grease that. Fuck. If you're lower health here, you could die. Damn crazy room. And she's gonna three gank. So D tier. A lot of champs here just have a complete bullshit laning phase. That's right, it's a bullshit. But these champs are hard to carry games with, usually. Like, you've all seen the NA Jace. You've seen the, I don't know, the Silver Azir, right? Like, if these guys are even with you, or if you're like 10, 20 CS behind, usually it's fine, right? Lucian, I mean, he's an AD carry, can die to everything. LeBlanc, these players suck at farming. Rise, it's Rise, like, unless it's a high low smurf Rise, like, you're not worried. Hammerdinger, falls off. Jace, just hard to pilot NA Jace. Zoe, same thing. Not great against tankier teams. Akshan, harder to play mid late game. Azir, just harder to play. Gangplank, same thing, easy to die. Anivia, eh, maybe this is the least true for her. Vex is pretty annoying, but if your team's tankier, might not be too bad. If you leave laning phase somewhat even and you have not died, this is usually pretty great. Like that's usually my goal against these kinds of bullshit laning phase champs. Doing the same thing Ari was doing, but it's like just scarier because it's LeBlanc and she has more kill threat, making it hard for you to farm. Poking you, getting your HP low. Like, you can see how gradually we're ticking more boxes on stuff Katarina doesn't want, right? You don't want to get poked, you don't want to die, you want your farm, you want the lane to be easier. And you want to set up ganks, so like people who are harder to gank as well. Like, if they did me is hard to gank, and they shit on you, what you gonna do? So, the Blanc dies. Let's go to the next one. Like super lane bully. I think you could kill her if she like misses her bubble and like missteps, but for the most part, pretty tough matchup. Graves comes, does some damage. She walks up, she has no bubble. Look at that. That's crazy, right? Very hard to find an opening. Um, Wave is slow pushing into Zoe and Katarina does this interesting roam top. Graves kills her. And now we're just gonna go back to lane. Nope. Wave is slow pushing into Zoe and you cannot really break this. So this cat opts to recall. It's like an unfortunate situation, but that's just the reality we're in because of that really shit trade where Zoe kind of just press ignite and now traded us. And now she's holding on to an exhaust and oh my God, man, it's just so tough. Look, she shoves it in. What are you gonna do? Can't really roam, it's hard to farm. And Bowie's just making our life really hard. 
Looks like she recalls, so we're gonna have some time to do something here. Okay, everyone looks top. Ah, uh, doesn't get anything. Damn. So he shoves. Maybe Rome's bot? Yeah, she's bot. This kind of chaos is pretty good for Katarina, though. Nice. Yeah, I feel like a lot of times you just want to, like, just shit on the, like, just shit on the cat. I don't know. Game playing's pretty annoying. He's a melee, but I'm going to put him in range because he's basically ranged. Zoning you with the Q, right? They nerfed a few things. I think they nerfed the grass between here and now. Between this patch and now. Uh, maybe a couple runes. So it's going to be a little different for a setup. It's not like first strike and shit, but still, still GP, right? Still gonna press key on you. He's gonna drop barrels. He's gonna make it hard to farm. He's gonna make your health low, just like the other picks in this tier. So this trade, even though it looks good, the way it's pushing on to GP and GP has more pots and he has his orange, he's gonna have more health. So if the GP keeps the wave here, you are screwed. You need to make sure the wave crashes. That way you can recall, roam, or even try to dive them. We get a great... I actually didn't see that play. That was a really good dive. I'm still going to continue watching this. I feel like it's still just rough. Like, now Gangplank has Sheen. Like, what does this kill even mean? It's cool, we got some gold, but... It's still a rough matchup. Like, look at this. Still, like, struggling to farm, doing your best. <laughs> yeah, that's why these matchups are, like, harder. Hard to crash through the wave in like by yourself. Kind of lucky the, the uh, Wukong came there, but like, what do you do there without a jungler? You can thin the wave, keep it there, and if that was a Vigar, like, you show that shit in, like, he doesn't do shit. Vigar, Lux, what are they gonna do? Or so F. Let's look at your Sada, like, fuck. She, she just jumps on you, teaches you a lesson, and like, what do you do? You, her W range is so long, you just try to farm. And if you take a little damage, she can find a good all in window on you. Her W is a big ass jump, by the way. Look, she's shoving. You don't really have any gank set up. And Tristana has a pretty big jump. She's just shoving. Wow. I mean, like, look at this. Like, if this doesn't look like an F tier matchup, I don't know. I feel like Tristana could keep it neutral. Like, like she just does not give a shit. Shove every wave. Big hard for her cat to farm. Ooh, really good trade. And I guess that's because she used the bomb on the wave. Tristana reset in TP. This one didn't take ignite. And it's just more of this. Like, what are you gonna do? Wave is pushing into Tristana. I mean, but you know, where, where Tristana is like, I for just shoving. Katarina tried her best to like push, get some farm. I mean, this Tristana just shoves anyway, so funny. We want to recall, but kind of hard to uh, find a good recall and like you can't really go to fights this health maybe but you can see how you can just die so easily silas invades here on the raptors and we're like kind of chunked kind of scary damn and i wonder if being poked like this is going to make a difference Uh, Tristana. Where's the Bandle Gunner? Wait, what is going on? I mean, I'm just gonna go to the next replay, but the lane is just so horrendous. Vlad, kind of more of the same. His sustain's really annoying. And you don't have a lot of pokes, so the damage you land doesn't really stick. 
This one took Airy. I like taking Dawn Shield when Vlad goes Airy. Like, the poke is just crazy. Just feels like you cannot take damage. One of Vlad's biggest weakness is that he doesn't really have like great push. Like most mages, most assassins can just shove the wave and recall. And he's not going to be able to clear the wave fast enough and you should get a free reset. But, but we can't really do that on cat early. We'll just like die pretty much. Like look at this. And we don't want to trade into him. He's just going to heal it back up. But we can see how the, our options are just it's so much more limited. I mean, but still, you're better in like these kind of fights than pretty much every champ. Damn. All right, melee champs. A lot of these champs are assassins. They kind of want the same thing you do. They want wave on their side. They want to trade down a long lane with you. They want to go to these skirmishes. And that's why they're tougher. So you want the wave on your side and you kind of don't want the wave stuck on their side. You know, we've talked about it a little bit in the D tier for the ranged. Very important that the wave does not get stuck on the enemy side. If I'm playing against a champion in C tier and they push a wave into my tower, after that wave clears, it's either going to be in the middle or it's going to be closer to my tower and slow pushing into the enemy. When I see that, I want to just last it. I want to keep minion advantage and I want to defend my minions. I will fight over these minions. Like when you have minion, minion advantage, that's the time to fight. If you can crash a big wave, like two or three waves onto the enemy tower, you have plenty of time to recall, roam, do whatever. And if they try to stop that, that's when you can get solo kills. So we're going to be looking out for that specifically after the crash, what we can do with the wave and what we can do after. In lower ranks, most people will just walk up to the wave and hit a level one. That's perfectly fine. Just let it push into you. Then when you're level two or three, and the wave is pushing back into them. That's when you defend your wave and try to fight. This Yone has TP. So yeah, shoves it in, hits the tower. Now you can try to defend this wave. Yone doesn't have a lot of room to trade. That's a good trade, even with all that little room. Wow. And he holds the E, so you can't jump on the dagger. You don't play it very well. Damn. I hope you can see how like if this Yon if this if this was like a more shit Yon, like You could definitely do something here. But this Yon played it super well. So can I recalls and then just run straight from base. Fuck the minions mid. We run bot. It's kind of funny. Come back. Wave is slow pushing into Yone. I feel like Yone would want to just try to hold it. Like thin it a bit. Cat's just trying to shove in the wave. Like it might look like she's trading onto the Yone. But like look at that dagger. Like she cares about the wave. Yone is holding it. But this fight over here happens. Ooh, kind of awkward. The wave is still like screwed. Probably just shove and recall with Lulu here. Damn. So good to shove it in. So Akali is pretty annoying. I think you're stronger than Akali pre-6, especially if you start long sword. It's just hard to get a good trade on her. You need to like try to bet out her Q by 
tethering it. Gotta dodge her E. Oh, when a colleague queues like that early, her Q takes like 140 energy level one, rank one. Until level four, it's like 140 energy out of 200. Like just watch her energy drop. You see that little sliver in her energy bar? That's how much she needs to actually Q. So when she queues once, she's not gonna have energy for her second Q unless she uses Shroud. And Shroud refunds 80 energy, so she'll have one more Q. Akali's slow pushing it in, kind of like the Yone. So after it crashes, I think we can definitely try to defend our wave. This invade is kind of unfortunate though. But yeah, we have minion advantage now. Uh, the jungle is bottom river, so probably might not want to be too aggressive, but we definitely have control of the wave. Yep. Still have minion advantage, like Akali can't really walk up. Honestly, we can just jump on her, right? She shrouds. Trying to shove this wave, I guess. No. Damn, get hit by the E. No way Akali holds this, right? Yeah, nah. So you can see how we had some, uh, like, when the wave is coming back and we have minion advantage, like, we definitely have threat. Like, we can definitely defend it, try to get a good trade. We have more minions. And like that kind of situation happens and like a lot of these, not those, a lot of these matchups like Cassidy and shoves it in and the wave is bouncing back towards him. It's like same thing, Yone, Fizz, Echo, Akali, and maybe a little bit different on like Galio. Actually, no, maybe not, maybe not really. Especially you have Longsword and Conquer, but I hope you can see that like interaction with the waves. Like that's really prevalent in more melee matchups all right, D tier. If you're interested in Zed, Talon, and Kiana, I think you should look at what I said in C tier. I feel like these champs kind of, same thing applies, but they're definitely harder. So I put them in D, but the idea is what's going on in C tier. I think that's how you should play against them. Everyone else, Irelia, Yasuo, Garen, Silas, Diana, these champs just stat check you. So if the wave is on the enemy side, you cannot break it. Um, if you try to break it, you're probably going to die. So you just need to pretend to roam or do something else because you screwed up. If the wave is on the enemy side, you probably screwed up. It's just that simple. So you got to go fuck off somewhere else. Try your best. Do something. You can try to break it and crash it onto the enemy tower, but it's going to be rough. You want the wave just near your side and you want to not die and just try your best to farm and hopefully fights happen somewhere else and you have opportunities elsewhere but realistically they want the wave on their side and if that happens it's a mistake by you probably you're pretty screwed and same thing applies for f tier except it's just worse <laughs> like it's just worse all right yasuo he shoves in the first couple waves into us it's fine we can farm under tower then he does is a really weird roam. And I, I'm skipping around a little bit, but Cat gets to farm this whole wave, right? And then Cat just runs down there and gets the kill. That's pretty good for us. Yasuo wants to just, he should just keep it neutral and make it really hard for us to farm. In what world are we like 32 CS and a kill at five minutes against Yasuo, right? What he wants to do is keep it in the middle or hold the wave on his side and make it really hard for us to farm. So I'm going to pause, look at the wave right now. We have more minions. It's going to slow push into the Yasuo. If he just trims the wave a little bit and just holds it near his tower, there's really nothing we can do. I guess we are level six and we have a kill now. So maybe we do roam, but they just shove the wave and guess what? Katarina just gets all the farm. That's pretty good. If Yasuo just shoves into you, that's amazing. You get all the farm. 
if something was happening, Katarina could run around here. Uh, looks like she's dropping a ward. But yeah, if the wave is neutral, it's harder to do stuff. If you also just shove, you just clear the wave and then you run somewhere. And most low elo Yasuo will just shove like an idiot, so you just keep your health high, clear the waves, and run around. So Yasuo pushing the wave in, making it kind of hard for us to farm. I'm surprised the daggers cleared both of the waves there, actually. Alright, Garen versus Katarina. So what you gonna do? Just gonna farm your best. Uh, we want the wave to not be on his side. And there's really nothing we can do. A lot of top lane champs fit in this category. They just like stat check you. If the wave is on their side, you die pretty much. And it's not a whole lot that you can do. You gotta know what farm to give up and gotta keep an eye open for any fights going on elsewhere. Garen is pretty short range, so it's not like there's he heavy kill threat. Like Renekton, Garen, Rumble, Jax, I don't know. Bunch of top laners, they have to auto you. So you can use your Shumpo to try to be safe, but you're definitely gonna miss out some farm. So this Garen just slow pushing into Katarina, wave shoves. Garen looks like he's hovering top side, but we're just gonna clear this wave. Katarina cues it, so her wave is going to be pushing, but we see a fight happening bot side. Yeah. Is Garen over there? I can't really tell. It's like, I don't know. Garen was actually hovering top side. Ah, uh, it's gonna fast forward. Garen's coming. What is going on, man? Somehow that happened. This was a really weird situation because like you can't predict all of that happening. But I just wanna go back and like look at this. So if your laner is just shoving into you, that's great. You see Graves invade here, and then Kazakh jumps over the wall. A normal Katarina would just, which is clear of the wave, right? It's hard to see in actual play here, but Katarina actually goes for it, so I think that's pretty interesting. Heavy trading level one. Um, I guess we both have Dorn Shield, but I feel like this definitely benefits the Garen because he has like his passive, and the wave is pushing onto his side, and we're not going to be able to crash it. So yeah, look at this wave. This is not what we want. I don't see how we crash this wave. You see Katarina trying her best. Did she want the cannon or did, was she just trying to crash the wave? So it looks like she tries to queue the cannon and like those back minions, but... Yeah, and the wave is still on Garen's side, so... Katarina has to recall. And the wave is just screwed this entire time. It looks like Kane's gonna flash over the wall. Yep. You see how Garen can walk up and push this wave into the tower? Even taking a tower shot, but we cannot do that the other way around. Wave is just pushing back into him now. Can't tell if he... I'm assuming he wants to recall, right? He hasn't spent his gold, but... He's still just holding the wave here. Nope, now he's pushing. That was kind of a bad push, because... The wave's not even going to crash. I don't even think Katarina even needed to hold that. But yeah, you can see how dumb this looks like. When Garen crashes a wave and recalls, Katarina's going to be pretty screwed. So Aurelia, what she likes to do, she likes to crash the wave and then get it slow pushing into her. So Aurelia, slow pushing, maybe the first, second, third wave, crashing onto it. Invades actually. Yeah, like, I just don't understand. Man, what a trade. And now, I mean, Kat can just get dove on this next wave here when she crashes. Drops a ward. 
Wave is gonna come back into Irelia, so Katarina is gonna have to recall pretty soon either way. You can see Wave come into Irelia. Okay, well that's why it's not a good matchup. It will type in Renekton versus Cat so we can see a cat get the shit on. So I'll just assume Renekton starts W. This one started Q. And he just pretty much stat checks you like your poke doesn't do too much. He has Dorn Shield, maybe he has second wind. His Q heals off off of the minions. If you walk up to farm, he can just W you. It's just annoying. And his W keeps you in place, so like even later on in fights in a skirmish, you just explode in the moment he auto attacks you. Yeah, very fun. I don't feel like, like unless you mess up when you're trying to farm, like he doesn't like force a kill on you like, like a Zed shadow, right? He still has to get in range of you. He has a dash, but like, it's not as threatening. You just can't really farm. If you wanted to stay high HP, you definitely can. It's just kind of rough, like that's kind of annoying. Like you're just trying to farm and you'll get poked a little bit if he's decent. Down like almost a wave. This guy gets a double. I guess Cat could move bot here. Yep, Cat moves bot. What does Cat get? Cat gets a kill. Oof, he buys MR. I mean, look at this. So funny, man. So disgusting. What do you do? No cat. He's gonna W. And yeah, bro. Crocodile real good. Okay. Rumble. <laughs> Katarina. Try to even do anything. Just get burnt. Again, roasted. Surprised Rumble didn't try to crash that wave. And it looks like it's slow pushing into him either way. So... When next wave comes in 10, 20 seconds, what is Katarina gonna do now? Wave is on Rumble side. Katarina cannot crash it. Rumble is just gonna last hit. It's actually slow pushing into Cat now, but Katarina cannot farm here. Okay. Looks like he just slow pushes the wave in. And then looks to skirmish. Cat does not, cat does not win. No way. Yeah, okay. That was pretty close. But I think it's interesting how we can just see every time how Rumble has double this Kyrena CS. And I guess he's good at skirmishing. But like those skirmishes usually favor you, that Katarina player. Like, he has double her CS from five minutes of lady. You're like, Three minutes and 30 seconds of laning, right? Just shit on her, I don't know, man. And like the other matches are like that, like you walk up, you try to auto something, like you're just gonna get fired by Rumble. You walk up, Set's just gonna eat you, push you in, stun you. It's kind of like the same thing. Um, I hope you can kind of see these groups. So if we, let's just say we're against Cat Arena, where would we put Cat? I mean, I feel like I would kind of put her here. You can kill Cat. It's definitely like even because the Aatrox probably here. You can definitely interact with him. Like he has skill shots. You can dodge. I would put him there. Some people play off star mid because he got buffed. Uh, honestly, if there was like a B, because like you can just dodge his abilities and he actually takes some poke. Unless like he goes tank or some shit. Malphite mid. Pretty annoying. Uh, you can't really, can't really dodge his abilities. I don't want to put it in. I wouldn't put it in F. But like, well, what would you do in lane? You just like farm. I mean, I guess after six and when you have AP components, you can just shove the wave. And unless he R's you, like, you're not gonna take too much damage. 
So like early lane maybe Early lane may be the D, but like later on it's probably like C or like even higher. Brand's really annoying if you ever played against a brand, like his poke is pretty good. Like I might have to take Dorn Shield or second win against him. Uh I'd probably put him in like here and just like farm, I don't know. Zillion. I haven't played against Zillion in a while. But like think about what he does. He throws his bombs, he slows you. His R revives him. So like maybe here. He can't really stop you from roaming. What is he gonna do? Throw some bombs and slow you. Yeah. So maybe like B or S. Team fights later on are annoying, but I don't really see it being a problem in lane. Varus, he's an 80 carry. I'd pretty much put all 80 carries in D, right? It's a lane boy. It's gonna be hard to lane. It's gonna prevent you from farming, but you can, you can kill him later. And he's, he's not gonna be great in fights. He has his R. If he misses his R, he's useless. We'll do like one more, I don't know. Pantheon. Uh, is it here? I mean, uh, I'd probably put it here. You can like Shumpo when he Ws you, if you can, if you time it or like react quick enough. You can like try to bait out his Q poke, kind of like a Kali. It's not that, it's not an F, but it's, it is annoying. You cannot be objective when making a tier list like this. There's just so many different ranks, servers, play styles. Someone like Lux and Hilo might be like C or B. Even for how easy it is to win a game against these champions, like it might look completely different. It's so hard to win a game against a Cassidy that's like really good, but it's fine laning against him. Laning against LeBlanc sucks ass, but winning the game is usually pretty fine. And Cat is all about just fights, skirmishes. You gotta just love that about Katarina. If this tier list looks daunting, because most champs are like C, D, or F, this just gotta be fine. You gotta like that about Katarina. You just run around, you clear ways quickly, and you just fight really well and you use your resets. Like, that's Katarina. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching. If you have anything you wanna see, just let me know. I'll actually consider it and I'll write it down in my little notes. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought of this, like honestly. I think this was pretty good.